again, we thank God for his providence, and we appreciate your presence tonight. Amen. It is our goal to uh, present the precepts of God in a very elementary fashion. It is our goal to put out the truth where you can really understand it. Because our Lord said, ye shall know the truth. John 8, 32. And the truth shall make you free. And that is free from sin and separation and suffering. Tonight we have a, just a little lesson. Tonight I want you to look at the book of Titus. Chapter, Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. Verse number 3 through 8. And I'm glad we have this up. You can see it. Paul is writing to Titus. Let me explain something. Sometimes I forget. Look over here if you can. You see this, the alien center? I want you to look at that, the alien center. Now, let me explain what an alien center is. An alien is one outside of a certain place. When we say an alien center, we're talking about a human being, a person, that's not in the church. That's an alien sinner. In other words, that person is not saved. They do not have a spiritual relationship with Jesus. They're in their sins. They're not saved. Now, when you read the New Testament, I'm speaking to alien sinners now. You make sure that you read it in the context and read it with the idea that the New Testament was not written to aid and sinners. The reason I'm doing this is because an individual will go to the New Testament and read a passage of Scripture that has nothing to do with them because it was written to, to saints. Now, if you don't know that, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Got it? Now, Paul is really writing to Christians. He's not writing to alien sinners. Amen. Well, we got a good crowd for a rainy night. So I want to put that, I really want to stress that because many individuals study the Bible. And I know some of you are watching by television, and you use passages like uh, 1 John uh, 1 7. Uh, if we confess our fault, he is faithful and just to forgive us. Well, that's not written to Asian sinners. That's written to Christians. And see, if you don't know that, you're going to be very confused. Members of the Church of Christ, don't let alien sinners point to a scripture that doesn't apply to them. If they want to know how to have remission of sin, they need to read the book of Acts. Amen. Because the book of Acts talks about the beginning of the new dispensation and Peter preached the first sermon in this dispensation on what people must do to be saved at remission of sin. And you go there and read uh, Titus or First John or Rome, well, you, you're reading somebody else's mail. You need to read something else. Amen. All right, with that in mind. That's good. Titus 3. Titus chapter 3, 3 to 8. For, notice what Paul said. He said, for we. Now that we there is talking about Christians. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers, lusts, and pleasures, living in matters and evil, hateful and hating one another. But after the kindness and love of God our Savior toward men appeared, not 
by works. A righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercies he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, I'll say you, that being justified by his grace, we shall be made as according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have oh, believed in God. Now, you notice this word here, believe in God, that's past tense. They had already believed, amen, believe in God might be careful to maintain good works. Amen. These things are good and profitable unto all men. All right. Here's our lesson tonight. Now, let me just take my time. Sometimes individuals ask me, Brother Shannon, why do you spend the time on making these charts, graphics? Here's the reason why. I'm going to teach you and tell you and show you. So listen, if you're blind, you can't see it. But you can hear. But if you are not blind and you can hear and see, it's better. So I, what I'm trying to do is make sure that you understand the Bible. That's the reason for this. Is that good? I want to make sure that you understand the Bible. Because if you don't understand truth, you can't obey it. All right. Now, we have three major points that we're going to deal with tonight in this text. Point number one, we're going to look at the past situation of the saints. You got it? That's verse three. Verse four through six, we're going to look at the precious salvation that we receive. Then we're going to look at performing saints, verse 8. Is that right? Should be 7 through 8 there. Oh, this should be 7 here. All right. Let's go down this. Past situation. We were dumb. What do you mean? We're dumb. He says, for we ourselves also were sometime foolish. You see that word foolish means Unlearn. Dumb. Stupid. We did stupid, crazy stuff, didn't we? Bow your heads. You haven't always lived the way you live. Don't don't look wait a minute. Don't even try it. Sprouting around with so called wings and a halo around your head like you never committed a sin. Wrong. We've all sinned, falling short of the glory of God. That all right? Now watch this now. So we were dumb. And not only dumb, we were disgraceful. Look at what he said. Disobedient, deceived, serving divers lust and pleasure. We did it all, didn't we? All right. Yes, sir. Read. Anybody here ever drank anybody ever drank whiskey in here besides me? Smoke cigarettes, mess with drugs, curse, dance, party, steal, all that crazy stuff. Don't even try. I never, oh, yes, you did. You're guilty of it. All right. Not only were we dumb and disgraceful, but we were dirty. What do you mean? Look what it says, living in malice. The word malice means evil. Watch it. And envy, hateful, and hating one another. Didn't we live like that? Now, if you're doing that now and you're a member of the body of Christ, you ought to repent tonight. Yeah. Repent. Change your mind about that and stop it. Amen. Well, uh, <laughs> that's, that's our past life. And we could go on and on and on about our past life. Uh, are you ashamed of what you used to live? 
Are you ashamed? Boy, I'll tell you, I've done some crazy stuff in my life, and I'm so glad you don't know it. I'm so glad that you don't know what I've done. And if you ask me some of the stuff that I, that I did in my past life, I'm going to ask you, you tell me yours first. And then I'll tell you mine. That's fine. I need to throw these points out as I go along here because sometimes the individual will interrogate you, but they won't tell on themselves. Anybody here like that? You ever see somebody come up to you and ask you all kind of questions, Brother Edwards, about this and that, and never volunteer any information? Don't let them get by with that. If you're going to interrogate me, let's turn this thing around. Let me ask you some questions. Go and put me on the witness stand. Put yourself on there first. Tell off on yourself. Amen. All right. Precious salvation. Let's look at it. He talks about how we used to live. But then he says, watch the word. I want you to watch this word. Maybe you can't see it over here. But, see that? Now everything's changing now. He said, but after the kindness and love of God our Savior. That's the source of our salvation. God is the source of man's salvation. All right? Toward man appear, that's the sinner. So we got the source of our salvation, but the sinners are the one that needs to be saved. Now, let me tell you something, good people. God doesn't need to be saved. God gave us the system by which man can be saved, and we must apply to it. Oh, wait. I'm trying to reach y'all. Some of y'all are hard to reach tonight. If you think I don't know it, Thomas, I can look just as well. I'm not communicating very well with you. I see you, you, you're not in it yet. You're not with it yet, but you, you're going to be all right in a few minutes. Is that all right? Now, we look at the source, we look at the sinners, but services that we did, watch what it says. Not by works of righteousness which we have done. Can I tell you something? If you committed one sin in your life, there is nothing righteous that you can do to get forgiveness of sin. Not, not by works of righteousness. See, we got some works of faith. We got some works of righteousness. If you think being a good husband, good wife, good son or daughter, good employee on the job, a good first-class citizen, I mean, you'd be good to your neighbors, you'd be good to everybody, that type of stuff will not save you. It's good to do that. But that does not cause you to have remission of sin. All right. Plain it good. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercies, he saved us by the washing of regeneration. Now you begin to understand the chart, right? Watch it. God saved us from our sin, not by works of righteousness, but by, according to his mercies, he saved us. All right. Is it coming in now? All right, I'm trying to explain this text. And every commentator and any Bible scholar will tell you that, watch it, uh, washing of regeneration is baptism. And I don't know why my denominational neighbors try to take water out of God's plan to say man. Somebody said, well, water doesn't have anything to do with it. Who told you that? I think you, just, you haven't been here 100 years. The Bible's been here almost 2,000 years. And Jesus said, go preach the gospel. He that believes is baptized shall be saved. Now, who are you? I'm talking to the folks. It's watching by television. And I'm talking to you preachers out there who advocate that baptism is not necessary to be saved. Now, wait a minute. Who are you? 
Now, I'm not talking about baptism only. That's not what I said. Jesus said, he that believeth, number one, is baptized, number two, shall be saved, number three. And don't even try to go to the thief on the cross because that was another dispensation. You may be a thief, but you won't be saved like one. I need to smile too, James. I, I don't know. I looked at myself to the knife. I was pretty rough. Let me fix myself up and look intelligent, you know, and smile. I don't have to be mean. I can be nice. I can still tell you the truth. But I'm just a little rough around the edge. I have learned real good how to be diplomatic. You know what I mean? Sophisticated. I'm just a country boy from Tennessee trying to preach the gospel of Christ. Is that all right? So don't come telling me certain things. God has set up a system by which man is to be saved. Is that all right? Now watch this here. Now, see, he's got a system. If you don't obey the system, you will not be saved. And God set up the system. Any veterans in here? You one. Any more veterans in here? Raise your hand. That's one dog. All right, good. Well, I don't know if you're in the system or not with the VA. Any of y'all in the system? You're in the system? Oh, I like to see that lady. I like that. And you serve your country? I serve mine. I'm in the system. What do you mean in the system? I can go anywhere in the world and pull my VA card out, and they'll accept me. Why? Because I'm in the system. If you've been in the military and didn't get in the system, watch it. You get sick. They're not going to wait on you. So I'm telling you, if you're a veteran, get in the system. Amen, somebody. Amen. That's good, isn't it? Well, we look at the system, then we look at the spirit. Watch it. Not, But according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Spirit is involved in this because it was the Holy Spirit that brought the truth down. Well, and then it says, the Savior, watch it, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Lord. We're saved, the saved, watch it, that being justified by his grace, we shall be as according to the hope of eternal life. Brethren, that is so good. Thank God for Jesus Christ. Well, let's go a little further. Now, since our past life, See, we were bad, but precious salvation, we have received it. And if you've obeyed the gospel, you're in the church, watch it. You can look at your past, but you can look at the precious salvation that you have. Now, if you hadn't obeyed the gospel, you, you don't have this. Last night, preaching here, a lady ran down the aisle. And I asked her, does she believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God? She's here tonight. I said, do you believe Jesus? She said, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Took and baptized her in the Christ. Wherever she is, she's saved. She's born again. She's an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Greatest move she ever made in her life. And there's somebody else here tonight need to do it. You need to do it if you want to go to heaven. Somebody says, well, I'm not going to do it. Well, you're not going to heaven either. Well, who are you? That's what the Bible teaches. Amen. Performing saints. Paul said, this is a faithful sin. What do you mean? That's great truth. This is a faithful sin. And these things I will that thou affirm constantly. Then it says, great test, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain Good work. Let me pause here a moment. Since God has saved us from our sins, and we're saved by the mercy of God, don't you know there's some good works you need to do? And I know what the Baptists teach. I know what they say. They said in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 8, for by grace are you saved through faith. That's not of yourself. It's a gift of God, not of works. See what they do? Watch this here. They go in, not of works, lest any man should vote. Now, what, what he's saying here, 
you didn't come up with a working plan to save yourself. That's what he's talking about. You didn't, you ain't smart enough. Not a works less in his memo. You can't be boasted about your salvation like you did it. God saved us when you obey him. But watch this. Look at verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto what? Good work. Now, if you're going to knock out all works, what about the good work? What are the good works? Performing saints. Three works of the church. Get it. Evangelism. That's what we're doing right now. We are preaching the gospel and trying to reach the lost with the gospel. That's evangelism, seeking and saving the lost. Then you got edification. Just like the sister obeyed the gospel last night, you members of this church are obligated, watch it, to edify and build her up. I mean, pause here a moment, work on the church a minute. Have you greeted her yet? Wait a minute. Come on down here, lady. Get up and come down here. I know what I'm doing. Bless your heart. Come on down. Yes, sir. Reed. I want you to turn around so they can see you. Hey, Amen. Bless your heart. Let me shake my sister's hand. Bless your heart. Is that good? All right. Now turn around and look at these folks. Now when you all leave tonight, this is our new sister in Christ. Greet her. Go ahead and take your seat, doll. Is that good? That's our, wait a minute. She needs to be built up. She's a babe in Christ. Don't act like she's full grown. She's going to need some pampering too. You know how you do a baby when the baby first born? You don't take the baby and throw it to the side. Think. Amen. All right. Great. Now, evangelism, edification. And benevolence, three works of the church. And let me tell you something. We have the word, and we should walk by it. You got it? We will worship. We need to worship. Is that right? But also, we need to work. Now, don't you think one time that since you've obeyed the gospel, and you're walking right, and you're worshiping right, if you don't work, do you think you're going to heaven? A lot of members of the Church of Christ make that mistake. They think I, as long as I live right and worship right, I don't have to do no work. Wrong. You ain't going to heaven. Just get that out of your vocabulary. You got to, Jesus said, go in my vineyard and work. Now, where are you working? Wait a minute. How long have you been in the church? Ten years, five years, twenty years, and you're not a professional in one of them. Wait a minute. You've been in the Church of Christ ten years, and you don't know how to teach anybody. You don't know how to build somebody up. You, you don't know how to fix a pie or cake and take it to a member that's down and out. I wish you could take that camera and turn around and let the, let the whole audience see these folks. Let the TV. See, y'all just look like y'all been sucking on lemons since I'm preaching like this. Oh, I know why you're looking like that. Because some of you are not doing any work. Oh, boy. Oh, that's good. Great truth, great trust. A great test, great trust. He said, these things are, are good and proper unto men. All right, that's enough long enough. Now let's get over here and start doing some preaching. Is that all right? That's the text. I just exegeted the text. And you understand that, don't you? Anybody? All right, let me stop here. What question do you have so far? Any question that I've been over here? See, if I'm not teaching properly and you don't understand what I'm saying, I need to go back to Memphis. What question do you have? All right. I assume you got it. Now let's go over here and start preaching, Gene. Not by works of righteousness, but by. 
We have God at the top. He done sent us at the bottom. Look at the stuff that saves us. God is the primitive cause of man's salvation. He will it. Lick your fingers and go. Amen. I don't see it up here. Well, anyway, it's 1 Corinthians. Turn over there. 2 Corinthians 5. Look at 2 Corinthians 5, verse number 17. I don't know why it's not up there. 2 Corinthians 5, verse number 17. Watch what it says. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And, and, and all things are of God. God is the one that divides the plan to save man, not us. So God is the primitive cause of man's salvation, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. God is the primitive cause of man's salvation. Christ is the sacrificial cause in man's salvation. It's according to his mercy. He saved us. Christ Jesus. Lick your fingers and go to Romans 5, 6 through 11. Is that all right? Watch it. For when ye were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. There it is. Look at it. Christ died on the cross. So he's the sacrificial cause. And man's salvation. And when he died, he shed his blood. Go back over here. For scarcely for a righteous man uh, will one die. Yet, preventive for a good man should one even dare to die. But God commended his love towards us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath to come. Boy, that's good. Watch it. Look at it, little friend. Raise it up. Come on up, James. Look what it says. For if when we were enemies, brethren, before you obeyed the gospel, you was an enemy. If you hadn't obeyed the gospel, you were an enemy of Christ. But he want to save us. He want to save you today. All right? Watch it. When we, we were reconciled back to God by the death of his son. Don't you know, had not Jesus Christ died, nobody could be saved. Being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only, but we also join God through Jesus Christ, uh, through Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Jesus Christ, watch it. The atoning blood. Brethren, you, we ought to be the shoutest people in the world because of what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. Now, when he died on the cross and shed his blood, he took the blood and he bought one church. Pause here a moment. You got that camera on me? You good people out there that's watching, I got to be nice. Any of you in churches that did not was purchased with the blood of Jesus, you can't be saved in it. You may be jumping. You may be doing a lot of good works. I don't care. But if it was not saved, if it was not purchased with the blood of Jesus, you cannot be saved in it. Now, the New Testament is the blood covenant, last covenant. Now, if you can't find your church in the blood covenant, it is not right. And you cannot be saved in it. Pause a moment. There's some good people in the Baptist church. What I mean, according to man's standard. But you're not saved. Why? Would you please tell me, where did you learn about the Baptist church? You, you didn't get it from the Bible. John Smith did it, 1611, Amsterdam Island. Not in the Bible. If you're in a Methodist church, wait a minute, some mighty good people, first-class citizen in a Methodist church. But the Methodist church is not in the Bible. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? Please understand what I'm saying. I'm not being mean and hateful. I'm giving you some facts. The Methodist church is not in the Bible. John and Charles Wesley in Oxford, England, 1729, they started that church. It was not bought with the blood of Jesus. The Roman Catholic Church. Where do you read that? And I know Roman. I know Catholic means universal. But where did the Roman church come? It did, you can't find it in the Bible. What does that mean? You can't be saved in it. Well, you mean to tell me all those folks in the Roman Catholic Church and all of them are lost? Who are you to say that? If you study the Bible, you can see it. Are you trying to send folk to hell? No. I can't send anybody to hell. But I can tell you when you're going, some things you can tell. And I'm not being mean, but somebody in North Carolina need to tell the truth. Hey, man. Jehovah's Witness, where they come from? Seventh day Adventist, show it to me in the Bible. United Pentecostal Church, show it to me in the scripture. I don't want no lip, I want script. Give it to me. Wait a minute, you mean to tell me? Just common sense ought to tell you. You got one New Testament, and you're telling me that the New Testament makes all these conflicting doctrines? Nothing bleed out but a crazy man. So God is the primitive cause of man's salvation. Jesus Christ is the sacrificial cause of man's salvation. And the blood of Christ is the procuring cause of man's salvation. Nobody can be saved without the blood of Jesus. And if you want the benefits of the blood, you've got to be in the body, which is the church. All of the blood of Christ is in his body. If you're not in the body, you're not benefiting from it. So if you, like that lady did last night, she's in the body now. She's in there, I'm telling you, she's in there. And guess what? When God looked down on her, he sees she's been covered in the blood of Jesus. Amen, somebody. Sister, you ought to shout from the mountaintop how good God lets you live long enough to obey the gospel. And most of the people in North Carolina will never be able to do it. You know why? Because they got wrapped up and tied up in some junk that's not even in the Bible. And that's what we're fighting about. Stuff ain't in the Bible. No Baptist church in the Bible. Methodist, Pentecostal, Jehovah's Witness, Seventh-day Adventist, Lutheran, Mormon, none of that stuff's in the Bible. But you want to defend something not in the Scripture. Well, we believe in the Bible. No, you don't believe in no Bible. Because you believe in the Bible, you get in the churches in the Bible. It ain't but one church in Scripture that you can be saved in, and that's the body of Christ, the church of Christ. It's called the church of God, and not this church of God junk. You see these folks jumping in mechanical instruments and music and out trying to get folks money. I'm hard on you. You fool my granddaddy, my daddy, and my ancestors with that junk not in the Bible. And I've learned the truth, and I'm going to expose you. My granddaddy died in the Methodist church. He didn't know any better. But you know better. It ain't in the Bible. My daddy died in that foolishness. Brother died in the Roman Catholic Church. But I'll tell you what, I went to, I went to my mother. So you got to come out of that Baptist church. My mother walked down the aisle just like that lady and obeyed the gospel. I hope somebody here is well enough to do it. Will you do it tonight? You don't have a chance. I got to be nice. Oh, I got your attention now. You're listening very well. No, I'm not being mean. Somebody needs to tell the truth. You can't be saved in that stuff. If the blood of Jesus didn't buy it, you better get out of it. God is the primitive cause. Christ is the sacrificial cause. The blood of Christ is the 
procuring cause. The Holy Spirit is the revealing cause of men's heaven. What do you mean? The Holy Spirit was brought to the Bible. The Holy Spirit never to bring the truth. Amen. The blood, the rest, you know what? Christ died on the cross, shed his blood, purchased his church. But had he not resurrected, you couldn't be saved. Look at Romans chapter 4, verse number 25. Let's look at it. All right. Turn there, brethren. Romans chapter 4, verse 25. Who was delivered for our offenses? Christ was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Brother, had Christ, wait a minute, his resurrection, we were justified, just as though we never seen. He ascended back to heaven. Holy Spirit came. That's good. It, all right. And the gospel of Christ is the instrumental cause of man's salvation. And obeying the gospel is the confirmation cause of man's salvation. Man must do something to be saved. I know what the nomination of people say. You can't do nothing to be saved. That is false doctrine. Lick your fingers and go to Acts chapter 2 and verse number 36 and 37. If you, why did these folks ask Peter that? Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Peter had just preached the gospel. Watch what he said. Therefore let all the house of Israel know surely that God has made that same Jesus who was crucified, both Lord and God. Now when they heard this, they, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto people and the rest of the process, men and brothers, what shall we do? What shall we do? Not what shall we get. What shall we do? Well, let's see what Peter told them. Then Peter said unto them, what then? The ones that asked him, men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Let me stop. Was Peter right or wrong? I'm asking your audience. You preachers, women and men, let's listen. Was Peter right or wrong when he said that? Was he right or wrong? Is that me beeping here? All right, we're okay. That's, that's all right. Wait a minute. Was Peter, wait a minute, the bat, you Baptist preachers, you say that Peter was wrong. How do you know? Because you say that you don't have to be baptized to have remission of sin. But Peter said you did. Now who's right? Do you think that I'm going to take your word over what Peter said? Jesus said, go preach the gospel. He that believeth is baptized shall be saved. These people Peter told to repent and be baptized. Whew. Let's lower it down. Anybody here want to challenge that tonight? I want to know, was Peter right or wrong when he said repent and be baptized for the mission of sin? I'm trying to tell you I'm a little different preacher from these other guys. I can slow it down. I can go down the first gear Slow it down. Cut the gas down when we won't go fast. I want to know, was Peter right or wrong in what he said? I'm challenging you folks in Eden, North Carolina, where we are, under this big tent, come out here and tell this audience that Peter was wrong in what he said. Now, I want you to go to Acts chapter 11 and verse number 15. I'm going to show you what Peter called it. And as I begin to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them as on us at the beginning. What do you mean? The beginning was the first Pentecost after the resurrection of Christ. Now, was Peter wrong when the church got first got started? If Peter wasn't wrong, and you say that you don't have to be baptized, so you're wrong. Isn't 
Isn't that good? So what are you going to do? And everybody, everybody was baptized on that day. Look at verse 47. Look, no, it's gone down, 40. Wait a minute. Go to Acts chapter 2. Acts 2. And with many other signs did he testify unto the Lord, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. Now watch this here. The Baptists say you can't save yourself. Wait a minute. Yes, you can. All you got to do is obey the gospel, and God will save you. Is that good? Watch it. Then they that gladly would see the word were baptized. Watch it. And the same day were added to them about 3,000 souls. Watch it. Come on up, verse 42. Come on up, James. Watch it. And they continued steadfastly in the apostle doctrine, fellowship, breaking the bread, and the prayer. That was the first worship. All right. And fear came upon every soul, and many signs and wonders were done by everybody. Is that what it says? Wait a minute. And many signs and wonders were done by the 120. He didn't say that. He said the apostle. See what happened when you read the Bible? I know in Acts chapter 1, it was talking about 120. But they wasn't doing no signs and wonders done by the apostle. Why? Because the apostles were to forever be the truth, carry the truth to the world. Amen, somebody. Look at what it says. Come on up, James. 44, watch it. And all that believed were together and had all things come. Now, all these people in this town, in this county, in this state said that they are believers. Why aren't you on the tent? All that believed were together and had all things come. Now I want to know what church was that member of. Drop down to verse 47. Come on up. Watch it. Praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Which one was it? I challenge you to tell me it was a Baptist church. Because I know the Baptist church didn't start until 1611 in Amsterdam, Holland. I know that wasn't it. I know it wasn't a Roman Catholic church. Why? Because it started in 606 in Rome, Italy. And the rest of them are latecomers. When John sealed the book in Revelation, anything that's not in the book too late for the press. Can't be saved. Come on out. Somebody said, well, my mother died in this church, and I know she went to heaven. You don't know where your mother's at. Your mother got to be judged, and God wouldn't save your mother, and she ain't obeyed the gospel. I think I said this once before there, young man. I was up preaching, very big old tall white guy. He was about this tall over me, and I'm up here. Red, big old guy. Looked like he weighed five or 600 pounds. He said, are you saying my mother went to hell? Well, I was preaching just like I am now. I said, well, here's this guy, 500 pounds. What you going to tell him? I said, sir, I'm sorry, but I didn't know your mother. <laughs> Is that smart? I didn't know your mother. But I knew one thing, God's not going to save anybody that will not obey his gospel. They were added to the church. Which one? The one that Jesus built. And Jesus Christ is the only man who ever lived on this planet would say in Scripture, I will build my church. Matthew 16 and verse 18. No other man have the right. Why? Jesus Christ shed his blood and prayed for the church. Acts 20 and verse 28. He shed his blood for the church. All right. I think I've talked long enough here. That's enough. Now, here's the alien center down here. It's got seen. What in the world can they do to be saved? Now, God's going to save them. God is the one going to save them. But is, are there any prerequisites at all on the alien center 
will they have to do anything? Number one, they got to hear the gospel. Acts 15 and 7. How Christ died, he was buried, and he was raised again the third day. You believe that? Watch this, James. Watch this. Joey, watch this. Do you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross, shed his blood, purchased the church, purchased our salvation? They placed him in a new tomb called Joseph of Amethyst. And on the third and appointed morning, Jesus Christ was resurrected from the grave. He stayed here about 40 days, and he went back to heaven. And 10 days later, the Holy Spirit came, watch it, and guide the apostles in all truth. Do you believe that? You got to believe that. Now, since you believe it, you got to repent. What? But what is repentance? I got him now. Our repentance is not confessing sin. That's what yeah. they told me. Yeah. All you got to do is repent. That's confessing all. Repentance is not confessing sin. Lick your fingers and go to Matthew chapter, what is it, 22, uh, 22, 28, or 28, 22. Where are you at? Matthew 28, what is that, 28, 22 there? All right, let's get it right again. Matthew, what is it? Matthew 28, 22, 28, 21, 20, 28. I'm 21, 28. 21. Come on now. Let's get it now. Let's see, let's see that is. That's it. Matthew 21, verse 28. Jesus, watch what Jesus said. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. Watch what the boy said. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward, he repented and went. The word repented. Change your mind. What is repentance? Change your mind. Hold it. You've got to change your mind about sin and stuff. That's repentance. What do you mean repent? Repent of what? In and on sin. And you can see tonight that in the church is not in the New Testament. You're living in sin. So what does that mean? You want to come out of it. What? Man, I play the piano in my church. It don't make no difference. You got to come out. Well, I'm one to earth. It make no difference. You got to come out. They made me a deacon. It don't make no difference. You got to come out. Why? Because it's not in the Bible. Not in the Bible. You got to come out of it. A preacher, you just don't know how hard it is. Yes, I do. I was in the Catholic Church. 32 years old. I had to come out. Did it hurt me? It hurt my pride. To give up the Catholic Church. Well, whoop it do. Hurt your little pride. Would you rather hurt your pride than to burn the hell? Yeah. Yeah. I came out. You're going to have to come out of that church, not in my. Are you folks listening to me on television? In the church, not in the scriptures? You've got to come out of it. What? He, God can't save you then. And the church that He wants you in, He's going to put you in. He adds it to the church. All right? Man. So you hear that? Gospel, believe it. Repent of your sins. All we're going to ask you, do you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God? You make that statement, I do. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Watch it. We're baptized. Why? Because Jesus said, go preach the gospel. He that believeth is baptized, shall be saved. But he that believeth not, shall be damned. Now, there's no exception to the rule. Now let me pause there a moment. That's not for babies. That's not for babies. Somebody told you that babies are born in sin. Who told Where did you read that? Where did you read in the scripture that babies 
are born in sin. Can you turn this thing over here? For John 3, 4. Let's identify what sin is. Now you're intelligent. You tell me if a baby. I think this lady's got a little baby in arm back. Watch this here. Whosoever committed sin transgress also the law. For sin is a transgression of the law. What law did the baby break? You Catholics, you Methodists, you Baptists, tell me what law is that baby broke. Yeah. A baby was born pure and holy. 18th Amen. chapter of the book of the Amen. Baby what? He was born into a sinful world, but the baby don't have no sin on his soul. Amen. If babies are born in sin, watch this. When they die from the mother's womb, you sin to go to hell. That's got to be your conclusion. And nothing but a crazy man will say an infant will go to hell because his mom and daddy were foolish. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Nice time. Anybody want to do it tonight? Everything ready? Oh, I told you I'm going to preach just like you first graders. Oh, you understand this. What in the world do I have to do to be saved? You heard the gospel, you say you believe. Are you willing to repent of your sin? You can't go back to that church. Well, I'll take that back. You can go back one more time and tell them you ain't coming back. Amen. Okay, you're back. I ain't coming back. Amen. You robbed me, you took money from me and my mother, and for a long time, I ain't coming back no more. Amen. Yeah. You gotta come out of it. I know it's good. A lot of stuff good. It's good to you, but it ain't good for you. But come on out. You need to come out before you lose your mind. See, you hear the truth like you're hearing tonight, and you just met on wait, 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 and lose your mind, and you can't come. Too late now. You held by. You turned the truth down. Jesus said he didn't believe it and not intend to be baptized. He said, you got to do it. Now let me stop. Never will be going to Why not tonight? Why not do it tonight? All things are ready. We're going to stand. Before we stand here, I'll drop those songs. Up. Anybody here want to obey the gospel? You can get up right now. Come on down. Come on down. Wait a minute. You know this is wheel of fortune. <laughs> is, is, is that what it is? What is it to say? Come on down. Probably right. But if the price is right, well, the price is right tonight. Come yeah. on down. Yeah. But you're going to get something tonight that's better than the price is right. You're going to get yeah. eternal life in Christ Jesus. When you come tonight and have forgiveness of sin, all things are ready. Why don't you do it tonight? Get up and come on down there. Together we stand and sing. Sing.